former North American heavyweight champion, Mr. Wrestling 2. This event, the big man from New York State, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who's on the Suicide Squad and on the specialty teams for the SMU Mustangs in the Southwest Conference in college and in the Atlanta Falcons in pro football. And talking about Atlanta, his opponent hails from that city and that state of Georgia, Mr. Rassing too, Bob. Well, it was in Atlanta about three years ago, 1978-79, that Mr. Wrestling beat Ernie Ladd for the uh, North American title. He held it for about a year. Uh, well, he's known all over the world. His reputation speaks for himself. You know, these two men are indirectly involved from last week. Uh, Mr. Wrestling too was the referee in that uh, Mid-South Tag title match. Oh, he went for that knee there. That knee lift that has won uh, probably hundreds and hundreds of matches for him, and you got to give Duggan credit. He wasn't suicidal enough to go into that knee. He definitely rolled right away from it, which showed some smarts on his part. And this man is not just a dumb animal. He's got some great cr credentials, like being kicked out of the uh, pro football, but uh, he's not a, just a dummy. He likes to hurt people. He likes to hurt, use his own body to do it. He doesn't mind. You can see he's taped up. He's got knee braces on, and he doesn't mind getting hurt as long as somebody else is there with him but he's not stupid and uh i don't think ted dibiase would want him as a partner if he was uh, if he didn't have a calculating kind of a brain and he is double tough now again wrestling too using that experience it's got it oh went for it again now duggan is not definitely watching out for one move you can see well mr Rassian too going for that power knee lift and at the same time jim duggan wisely once again as hacksaw comes out for the ring for a moment's respite. Well, he's having to regroup and sort of reorganize his plan of attack because what he's tried so far has not worked. And a lot of competitors that have gone against Mr. Russell too have found out that that is exactly the situation. He's a, for example, here with very little stress to him because your legs are much, much stronger than your arms in most cases. He's using his legs to put pressure around the chest, thorax, throat, face, cut off the breathing in several different ways, cut off the circulation. Duggan came out of that pretty easy. Well, wrestling two counter dad again, comes up with an arm lock again now. He's bringing his weight to bear on Duggan. He's making him carry the two of them. And he is putting pressure on that shoulder joint, constructing the chest area where breathing's a little more difficult. If you can get a man tired and blowed up, he's much easier to beat. Duggan, from my viewpoint, has given him too much warning about what he's going to do. He's too obvious with his moves. And he shows his temper there, that big foot stomp that he seems to have trademarked. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing with it, but... Again, wrestling two on the offensive, very aggressive wrestler. Now, again, he's punishing the extremities. He was working on the head, he went to an arm, now he's working on a leg. That 52-inch chest that Hacksaw Duggan has is probably not a smart place to attack. So he's working on the legs. He's weakening the man, looking for an opening, looking for some place. Again, with those knees heavily padded, those knee pads, that one, that that far leg, he looks like a pull hamstring, a adductor muscle of some kind. And uh, he's smart to work on an area. If a man's hurt, uh, unfortunately, uh, he should not telegraph it. Now, again, he got too close. Duggan went after that mask, and I know from my own experience, you go after that mask on wrestling, too, it's like it's like uh, knocking over a hornet's nest. He just kicks it into high gear. That's been his trademark, and I, I don't think... Uh, I think he, you're going to have to probably have him totally unconscious before you do anything like taking that mask off. A lot of people have tried, and I don't know if anybody's been successful. Now, again, he's working on the upper body. He's got a head and an arm this time, a cross lever, putting the pressure on, making Duggan carry him. He's not carrying his weight at all. He's got Duggan bent over. Where again, breathing is much more difficult, making him carry him. Very, very smart. Intelligent wrestler, experienced. His reputation was not earned by any flukes. He's a tough competitor. I look forward to beating him sometime real soon. Well, I say that. I, he's a hard man to beat, but of course, everybody can be beaten. No unbeatables. Junkyard Dog just showed that. He beat three men. Took the general's army and put him in a complete retreat, a rout, you might say. Duggan now on the offensive. 
He got a chance to use his power. Caught him with a big stomp. Punch before that to the breadbasket. He's a powerful man. And again, he likes to beat up people. Goes for a press off the slam body press. Wrestling two's out. I don't think he even got a one count. He's back on his feet. Backing up, recuperating, getting into the ropes. Smart wrestler, very smart. Now, Duggan, is, Duggan gave him too much room. Wrestling two is fighting fire for fire a little bit there, a couple punches. Well, he set Duggan up for that one, reverse, tossing the ropes, a back drop at 280 pounds. Ooh, that knee lift, he caught him. That power lift took him completely out of the ring. Duggan's probably wondering where he is right now. I felt that knee lift myself. And well, earlier, Bob, you saw that Duggan saw him coming with it and took himself out of the ring. That time, Rastin two connected and took Duggan out himself. Ted DiBiase coming down, offer some advice, uh, some sort of comfort. Duggan needs something right now. And pushing him back in the ring, helping hand there, I guess you'd say. DiBiase cheerily. DiBiase, we can't see there. Dick Murdoch. Dick Murdoch's down there now. I was talking about the bad blood between these two. Chase DiBiase in the ring of Spear. Duggan Spear and his partner. There's a dynamic knee lift. Fast and furious and One, complete. One, two, three. It's Mr. backfired. Mr. Rassing, too. There you see his hands raised in victory, showing the truth. Uh -oh. Alfred Neely just got in that melee over that mask. Alfred Neely just got thrown out. These men are fighting. Two the side done masking, both of them down. And there, ladies and gentlemen, right there, the man waiting for that golden opportunity. The grappler. What's he doing? He didn't load the boot. He's trying to insult wrestling, too, by using his own knee lift as a weapon against the master. The grappler trying to add insult to injury right here. He's going for the coup de grace. But two scoops right out of the way. The master knows the defense to his own weapon. And wrestling two showing who can pop that knee. And he is taking his head off. And there's whoever he is back in the ring. Albert Neely calling for the disqualification. He's seeing both men. But wrestling two's not stopping on the bell. He's firing away. And he's whipping them both. And everybody knows the message of two, two, hey.